Hey, what are you doing there? How are you? Good looking face, face person, face man, face woman, face face. Ah, look at that. You look like you just had some spaghetti. Did you have some spaghetti? 9.15 in the morning, I don't think you had spaghetti. Unless you wanted to. Who gives a shit? Eat what you want, when you want, how you want. How are you? My name is Nick. Uh, you're checking me out either on my YouTube channel, uh, which means that there's like over 140 videos below this one, so scroll down and watch them. All kinds of movie reviews and talking about entertainment and fun and telling old stories and telling jokes and having some fucking fun and all that cool stuff. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's free. Or you're watching me on Patreon, which is more important because you can help me out by donating. Pick a tier, donate. Three bucks, six bucks, 25 bucks a month. Three bucks a month. What is that? What is that? Is it? That, 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 that's a bag of Fritos and a small Coke. You might miss a bag of Fritos and a small Coke a month. What is that? Anyway, Patreon's a great place for, uh, for uh, artists and, <clears throat> and musicians and people who want to tell stories and do videos and have some fun and give that to people, but and also to, to, to get some help, some, uh, some donations, if you will. And you get bonus materials, bonus videos. Uh, I, I supply a bunch of bonus videos and usually once or two, two or three times a month. Uh, many of them are about WGN, behind-the-scenes stories about the firing and all the idiots that are in charge over at that train wreck of a radio station right now. And if you want to hear about that, you got to donate. Please do. Hey, you know how you watch PBS and you don't donate? You don't get a that way. You're, you you don't get a, a a tote bag, so that means you don't get the extra videos. And you're kind of a dick if you don't donate uh, when you're watching PBS. So think about it that way. So go to Patreon.com/slash/NickDShow. Donate today. Okay, if you don't, that's cool, but it would be really, I would really appreciate it if you did. And a lot of the artists at Patreon kind of count on that in order to keep these things going. So, you know, I mean, you're not a dick. I'm, you know, I'm kind of being an asshole saying that. But truly, just donate. It's a good thing. It'll make you feel good about yourself. Uh, you'll be a good human being if you donate. Okay? Okay. So, anyway, patreon.com slash Show. Donate now. My podcast, every Tuesday, every Friday, new episodes, Radio Misfits Podcast Network, the, the best uh, podcast network in the world, and available everywhere, Nick D Podcast. All right, so yesterday, uh, I went to the press screening of David Cronenberg's new film, Crimes of the Future. Uh, David Cronenberg is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time. Um, he is consistently interesting, pushing the envelope, does very risky, ballsy stuff, uh, and has directed every kind of movie since he started doing the body horror, really creepy, awesome horror films that he started out doing, you know, in the 70s and into the 80s. And then he became, you know, a more mainstream director, even though his stuff is not mainstream by any stretch of the imagination, when he would do stuff like he did in Butterfly, he did uh, History of Violence, um, you know, more, kind of more acceptable stuff. Uh, uh, Maps of the Stars was his last movie, and that was like eight years ago. But his new movie is called um, Crimes of the Future, and it is a kind of a throwback to the old vintage uh, David Cronenberg. Body horror, really creepy, gooey shit. And I'm going to give you a full review of it. I loved it. I thought it was brilliant. I do want to see it a second time before I let the whole thing meld into my brain, but I think it's one of the best movies of the year. I love David Cronenberg. I love everything he's ever directed. I don't think he's ever directed a bad movie. His movies range from really, really good to fucking masterpieces, and he's done a bunch of those. Uh, and this one goes back. It, it is the most David Cronenberg early-like movie. It's a companion piece to Existence which is a movie he made in 1999. So it's been that long since he's really dove into this weird sci-fi body horror stuff. It's a great film. But anyway, immediately after the screening, one of my uh, compadres and film critic buddies who was in the press screening for the Cronenberg movie, immediately when the credits came up, there was a little buzz going around as people turned their phones back on. Uh, and Eric Childress told me that, uh, and my friend uh, Steve Procopi, those two guys review movies with me on my podcast, that Ray Liotta passed away. And, you know, uh, it all, we were all just like, you know, you're in a, f a room full of film critics and the, the story of Ray Liotta dying starts to spread through the room of film critics. A lot of sad film critics are in the room. And this is really, it really sucks because it came after such a high, after, you know, a first, the first David Cronenberg movie in like eight years and the first body horror David Cronenberg movie in 23 years. 
And it was awesome, and I loved it, and I was like, oh my god, Cronenberg rules, Ray Liotta's dead. So uh, I thought I would uh, talk a little bit about Ray Liotta. Uh, I'm sure that you have your favorite Ray Liotta performance. If you want to share it, please do. Leave it here at patreon.com slash nickdshow after you donate, or uh, leave your comments or wherever. I uh, would love to hear from you. Um, obviously, Goodfellas is the, is the one that everybody goes to, and you should go to, because... It is a phenomenal performance. He carries the movie. It's a near three-hour Martin Scorsese epic. And Ray Liotta, who had only done a few movies before... I think people forget that when Ray Liotta did Goodfellas, he only really had five, six movies under his belt and some soap operas. So he was relatively new to the scene at that point. And he was the lead in a Martin Scorsese film that also featured Oscar winners Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci, and heavy-hitting actors like Paul Servino and Lorraine Bracco. These are all people, and it's directed by Scorsese, and filled with a ton of the incredible actors that he's used in his movies before. This was a high-profile, big-time fucking movie, and Ray Liotta, veteran of like five films, was suddenly thrust into this lead, you know, a bigger part than De Niro, a bigger part than Pesci, uh, you know, leading... A Scorsese movie, and he knocked it out of the fucking park. He was the, he was for the most part, he was the the narrator of the film. He was it was told from his point of view. He played a real life guy, Henry Hill, a real guy who wrote the book that it was based on. So all of these things actually happened. It was you know there's a lot of weight on this young actor's shoulders, you know, coming out of you know working on soap operas, some TV movies, and then a few good films, um, and a few movies, and then suddenly boom. He's the lead in a massive Scorsese movie, you know, with mega, you know, legends in it. And he's great in it. So it goes without saying that, you know, his performance in Goodfellas as Henry Hill is one of the best performances ever. He's fantastic in it. There are legendary sequences and legendary lines and legendary moments. It is one of those performances that will go down in history and already has gone down in history as one of the best and most important acting performances ever in one of the best and most important movies of all time. So yes, Goodfellas. And before, right before Goodfellas, a year before Goodfellas, he, ple- he appeared as Shoeless Joe Jackson in Field of Dreams, and that got him a much bigger audience. It was a big success. He played a much nicer guy. Um, but, you know, if you look back at Ray Liotta, he was only 67, by the way. Only 67. They don't know how he died. He died in his sleep in the Dominican Republic while he was filming a movie. By the way, um, there's going to be uh, Ray Liotta stuff coming out even after his death. He had had four projects in the can, including a TV series, a streaming series, that will be coming out shortly. But he had four projects in the can, a TV series and three movies. Um, He was filming three things at one time, and the thing that he was filming in Dominican Republic when he died yesterday, that is also, uh, we don't know how far along they are in that filming. But at least four projects will be out that Ray Liotta was in. So he was working a lot. I mean, he had, you know... Seven projects going at once, four in the can. So he was still working, um, and he passed away. Nobody knows how in his sleep. So he was only 67. Uh, He worked a lot. He's got a ton of credits on IMDb. He did a bunch of TV series over the years, uh, and he did uh, did many movies, appeared on TV shows, did voiceover work in in animated stuff. Uh, He had an amazing career, and he was a terrific actor, and by all accounts, an incredibly nice guy. I've talked to people who have worked with him, Lance Hendrickson, who uh, I've, I've, I know now thanks to the flashback uh, horror convention. Um, I've met him several times. He worked with him on two films, including No Escape. Talked about how wonderful it was to work with him. Uh, Kevin J. O'Connor, uh, a friend of mine, had worked with him and a great actor. Uh, any you know stories that you read about Ray, Ray Liotta, uh, Lorraine Bracco has nothing but glowing things to say about him. Everybody that has ever worked with Ray Liotta said that he was amazing, that he was cool as hell. Uh, my, my radio compadre, Kevin Matthews, uh, had him on several times as a guest and said that he was a dream guest. He was awesome. He was open to doing, you know, uh, what are you, Goofy? He was open to doing all the bits that Matthews did said he was great. So everybody who ever met him or knew him said that Ray Liotta was not only an incredible actor who could do anything from comedy to drama to voiceover to horror, anything, but he was also a fucking nice, wonderful, awesome guy. And that's not surprising. So I thought I'd fly through some of my favorite Ray Liotta performances. We did uh, uh, briefly cover it on the new podcast episode that's out now, episode 38 
uh, Steve and Eric and I talk about Ray Liotta and our favorite performances and stuff. Um, as we also review on that episode, the shitty new Top Gun movie, which is a piece of shit, uh, and the great Bob's Burgers movie. Um, but here are some Ray Liotta stuff. Now, I remember seeing uh, Something Wild for the first time. Um, the Jonathan Demme masterpiece from 1986. One of the many amazing, awesome films that the late, great Jonathan Demme made. Might be his best movie. It's up there. Might be his best movie. With Jeff Daniels and Melanie Griffith and Ray Liotta played a scary motherfucker in that. Uh, in it, Jeff Daniels is this straight-laced business guy that gets picked up one day by this wild woman played by Melanie Griffith named Lulu, and he skips his job, and he, you know, he, he, he goes out in this crazy adventure, uh, and uh, he falls in love with this incredibly weird girl, decides that he's going to go to, to, to her high school reunion and pretend that they're married. And uh, at the high school reunion, her real husband, Ray, shows up, played by Ray Liotta. And he's a very scary, and all kinds of consequences happen. He's a terrifying character. I remember seeing uh, Something Wild. I was sitting next to Roy Leonard, the great Roy Leonard, in the screening room with critics. And uh, I remember when Ray Liotta came onto the screen. And as Ray Liotta continued his performance in that movie, I remember sitting next to Roy, and there were times when we would laugh at what he did and kind of <gasps> be kind of terrified by what he did. It was like, there was a couple of times when Roy and I looked at each other. We had never really seen this guy. I'd never seen him before. He had done work before that. He'd been in a couple of movies and some TV shows. But I'd never really seen him before. And I looked at Roy, and we both looked at each other and went, this guy, this guy's the goods. He's fucking amazing in something wild. It is one of those performances where you, wow, I've never seen that person before, where he jumps off the screen, where he owns it. He owns every scene he's in. He's funny in it, he's charming, he's handsome, he's rebellious, and he is scary as fuck. He's terrifying in that movie. You never know at any moment this guy could snap and kill everybody. He's funny. It's a very, very creepy, wonderful, very sexy, very charismatic performance. Like this guy's eyes, his face, he was made for the movies. And he played every kind of emotion. He had the audience in Something Wild. Ray Liotta had the audience right here. And he did a bunch of stuff to that audience. It's one of the best you know, performances I've ever seen, especially by a newbie. You know, I'd never heard of the guy. It wasn't his first movie, so I can't say it's the best debut performance of all time, but it certainly was one of the best first-time performances I had ever seen. So he established himself with something wild. The next movie that he did was Dominic and Eugene, which is obviously the complete opposite of, of, of what he played, of Ray, uh, in Something Wild. He played the sweet older brother of a, uh, a mentally challenged uh, uh, guy, played by uh, Tom Hulse. Uh, not a great movie. The performance is both, both Hulse and Ray Liotta are, are quite good. And Jamie Lee Curtis is in it as well. And there are good performances all the way around. It's not a great movie, but Ray Liotta is really great and he played nice. He played like the normal, you know, you know, he played a normal person, not an insane guy like you did in Something Wild. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, um, Field of Dreams came after that. Uh, he played Shoeless Joe Jackson's supporting role in the Kevin Costner movie. We all know he's sweet and wonderful in that movie, although there is a moment in the movie where, because he still got that edge. Ray Liotta always had that edge, where he always looked like, even though everybody said he was a sweetheart, he always looked like at any moment he could snap and kill everybody. There was always that, Ray Liotta always had that uneasy edge to him, even when he was romantic and funny and all that stuff. And he's really wonderful and, and beautiful uh, in, in, uh, in Field of Dreams. But there is that moment when he's talking about Ty Cobb, where he goes, <laughs> when he starts laughing about how they're not going to let, they didn't let Ty Cobb come back to the Field of Dreams, because he was an asshole in real life. And he goes, <laughs> and he does that laugh where even I was like, uh, is Shoeless Joe going to kill Kevin Costner and Amy Madigan and the entire family? Uh. Anyway, he was great in Field of Dreams. Um, and then Goodfellas. Then he did stuff like Article 99, very solid medical drama. He was great in that. Unlawful Entry, uh, where uh, he played the loon. He went back to Looney, and he terrorized Madeline Stowe and Kurt Russell in a terrific thriller directed by the great Jonathan Kaplan. A great genre picture. It's a B-movie, but it was released by a big studio, and Ray Liotta doing the scary shit, doing the crazy stuff. Top-notch performance in a tremendous thriller with a great cast, Madeline Stowe and the great Kurt Russell. Put Kurt Russell and Ray Liotta in a movie, have Jonathan Kaplan direct it. How is it not great? It's fucking amazing. So Unlawful Entry, another great one. I happen to have a, a very soft spot in my heart for a movie called No Escape, which was this adventure movie kind of like... Um, you know, like a you know, like a sort of a, a like a hunting movie, 
uh, where you know the humans are being are used as prey. Um, it's a it's a terrific movie, and it's No Escape, directed by Martin Campbell, who would go on to direct uh, Bond movies. Uh, and with a great supporting cast, and Ray Liotta's fantastic in it. I love No Escape. A lot of people hate that movie, but I love it, and I love him in it. Um, I also love Turbulence. Now, this one's a guilty pleasure. I mean, because even I know this kind of movie, this movie's kind of shitty, but it's uh, 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 Lauren Holly. Remember when Lauren Holly was a thing? Lauren Holly plays this uh, flight attendant, and there's a lunatic on the plane, and, of course, it's played by Ray Liotta. Brennan Gleeson is in it. It's got a really good cast. Um, it's not. A, it's not a great movie. It's a, it's a, it's enormously silly, and it gets goofier and sillier and more unbelievable as it goes on. But to watch Ray Liotta just cut loose as the loon on the plane, turbulence. I highly recommend it. I, I highly recommend it strictly for Ray Liotta's completely unhinged, fucking awesome, crazy ass performance. Ray Liotta, awesome in turbulence. Uh, and Copland, great movie. That was the movie where everybody wanted to legitimize Sylvester Stallone as a serious actor after so many years of doing stupid shit. And he's great in it. Uh, De Niro's in that one as well. Uh, it's got an incredible cast, Harvey Keitel. And Ray Liotta's fantastic in it. Copland, directed by James Mangold, with uh, some... some it, it's a really great... And a great performance by Sylvester Stallone. He really is tremendous in it. It's a great film. Nice low-budget return to form where, uh, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone didn't take a big paycheck on this, wanted to do it just to do it and work with great actors. Fucking Leota is amazing in Copland. He's great in Copland. Another great performance. Uh, the Rat Pack, the Showtime, made-for-Showtime cable movie about the Rat Pack. Ray Liotta plays Frank Sinatra in it. Sings... Charms plays Sinatra. He's very, very good in it. Um, it's not a great movie. It's sort of a standard made-for-cable biopic, you know, um, with a bunch of other, you know, uh, actors playing, you know, the, the, the rest of the members of the Rat Pack. But uh, Leota's great. If you want to see Ray Leota play Frank Sinatra, it seems like great old blue eyes. Seems like great casting to me, and it was great casting, and he's terrific in it. So uh, the Rat Pack as Frank Sinatra. I highly recommend that one. Uh, here's one of them that I absolutely adore. It's a movie called Heartbreakers. It is a comedy, a sexy comedy, uh, and sort of a heist con job movie with Sigourney Weaver and, uh, uh, and uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, both really great in it, really funny, unbelievably sexy, both of them. Woo! Gene Hackman's great in it, and Ray Liotta is phenomenal in Heartbreakers. It's a great comedic performance. It's also kind of a heartbreaking performance. No pun intended, but he's great in it. It is this this role that could have been sort of one-dimensional comic relief gangster kind of thing, and he makes so much more out of it. He brings so much more to it. It's a beautiful, three-dimensional, surprisingly great performance in this really terrific, underrated comedy, a very sexy comedy from 2001. Jennifer Love Hewitt, Sigourney Weaver, Gene Hackman, and a great performance by Ray Liotta. Really, I think one of his one of my favorites, and a great comedic turn. Again, proving that he can do comedy. He's hilarious in Heartbreakers. Absolutely hilarious. You want to see Ray Liotta crack you up? Absolutely hysterical performance. Ray Liotta, Heartbreakers from 2001. Um, Identity, another movie that I love that everybody hates. This was... Uh, uh, a great sort of another James Mangold movie, another sort of ten little Indians thriller uh, with a bunch of people who show up at a hotel. People just start getting killed, and you got to figure out who the murderer is. Uh, you know, John Cusack is in it, Amanda Peet is in it. It's um, it's a ter it's a terrific movie. I love it. Ray Liotta's fantastic in it, among all the great sort of characters. Rebecca De Mornay. It's just a it's I think it's a fantastic sort of mystery who done it thriller crazy. Nutty movie with wonderful characters, terrific performances. A lot of great actors are in this movie, and they do a great job. I loved Identity, and it's got a crazy, ridiculous, nonsensical ending about who the the killer really is and all that shit. I love that movie. I love it. And Ray Liotta, one of many great actors and actresses in that movie, kicking massive ass. Ray Liotta's great in a great movie, Identity. So make sure you check that one out. He does uh, voices in SpongeBob. He's in the SpongeBob SquarePants movies. Uh, he did voices for SpongeBob. He's done voices for a lot of uh, other animated things too, but SpongeBob being the biggest one. He provided voices on Family Guy. He worked a lot on the Seth MacFarlane stuff, so he did stuff for, for Seth and Marvelin. Um, he was in the, uh, the Many Saints of Newark, which is a movie I completely forgot existed until Eric and Steve reminded me of it yesterday. 
the uh, the the Sopranos movie. I forgot he was in it because I forgot the movie existed because the movie was so shitty, it was so bad and so unnecessary. But I forgot he's really good in it. He's the, by far the best thing in it. Actually, he's the only good thing in the Many Saints of Newark, which was an unnecessary, stupid Sopranos piece of bullshit. But Leota terrific in it. But the most recent performance before his death, in which he was phenomenal, was Marriage Story. Noah Baumbach's incredible, wonderful, heartbreaking, beautiful, warm, just devastating drama, Marriage Story with Adam Driver and, and uh, Scarlett Johansson uh, and the incredible Laura Dern for which she won an Academy Award. She played the opposite uh, lawyer and Ray Liotta played the other. Ray Liotta plays a lawyer in it. It is a wonderful performance. It's funny, it's edgy, it's really warm. It is, you love the guy. You love him, even though he plays a lawyer. Uh, and even though there's a lot of shitty tactics that have to be used within a divorce case. But his last great performance and the last great movie that he made was Marriage Story. So if you've not seen Marriage Story, it's a great movie on its, on its own merits with incredible performances all across the board. Adam Driver, Scarlett Johansson, Laura Dern, everybody in it is great. But a great performance by Ray Liotta. His last really, truly special great performance was in Marriage Story. But uh, but there you have it. Um, something Wild, Dominic and Eugene Field of Dreams, Goodfellas, Article 99, Unlawful Entry, No Escape, Turbulence, Copland, Rat Pack, Heartbreakers, Identity, uh, Marriage Story, and The Many Saints of Newark was the most recent thing he did. So we've got more coming out. He had four things in the can, and there you go. 67 years old, a special actor, a great actor, uh, who made an incredible impression on me when I first saw uh, Something Wild, and he only got better after that. He could do anything. He was only 67, way too young, and I just wanted to pay tribute. So those are a bunch of titles. If you've not seen some of these, go and watch them. Ray Liotta was a great actor, a special actor, a remarkable actor. So go check out his work. Rest in peace, Ray. We loved you, man. All right. Thank you.